Welcome to this short video about Cochrane's uh, new hub for Cochrane uh, consumers and volunteers. I'm Richard Morley, I'm the Cochrane Consumer Engagement Officer and uh, I'll introduce you to the, the webinar and say a few brief words about consumers in Cochrane. So Cochrane has a statement of principles for consumer involvement. And these set out how uh, the role of consumers in Cochrane is vitally important to the work that Cochrane does to produce uh, evidence. And uh, you can read the statement of principles uh, at the Cochrane Consumer website. And there'll be details at the end of this webinar, um, which uh, show you how to find out this and other information about consumers in Cochrane. Consumers have been involved in Cochrane since its very beginning in 1994 with the formation of the Cochrane Consumer Network. And consumers play a vital role in producing evidence and in the governance of Cochrane. There's a network of over 1,500 people around the world who contribute to Cochrane. Cochrane consumers, that's patients, carers, family members, and others have a vital role to play largely because of their unique experience and knowledge that they have about uh, healthcare conditions. And you can read more about this if you go to the consumer website and find this infographic. It's an interactive infographic, which has lots of information about uh, getting involved. And if you're new to Cochrane, um, the different ways in which you can contribute. So if you're a Cochrane consumer and looking to get involved, Task Exchange is a great platform, a hub, to find uh, information about volunteering opportunities and ways that you can contribute. It's particularly good uh, because you can personalize your experience. And uh, I'm now going to hand over to uh, Emily Steele, who's going to explain in more detail about Task Exchange. Thank you so much, Richard, and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So I'm Emily Steele and I'm the Task Exchange Community Engagement and Partnerships Manager. What I'd like to do today is introduce Task Exchange as a way of getting involved in producing evidence and demonstrate how to use Task Exchange to find opportunities that suit you. So I'm going to move on now to, with the rest of the presentation. So starting off with what is Task Exchange? So we're an online platform um, that brings people together to get health evidence projects done more quickly. And by health evidence project, we're fairly broad um, in that these days. So that might be a systematic review, might be a guideline project, or it might be some other kind of um, health evidence synthesis work. Task Exchange is a place to go if you need help. So it's a way of overcoming time and skill challenges. It's also the place to go if you want to help out. So um, Task Exchange provides opportunities for meaningful contributions from consumers. We're a global health evidence synthesis community of almost 3,000 people now. So you can see we've been around for about two and a half years and our number member numbers are still uh, rising at a great rate. So we're ever growing. About 15% of our task posters are seeking consumer input. So that means that it's a, it's a reasonably significant proportion of the type of tasks that are put up on Task Exchange. Um, you might wonder what's in it for you in terms of helping out on Task Exchange. When we ran a survey um, about 18 months ago and asked people why they wanted to, to, to um, volunteer on Task Exchange, we found that most people um, were doing it because they wanted to help out on meaningful projects. Um, but I also want to let you know that for each task that you um, take part in, you'll receive one or maybe two of the following. So acknowledgement on the final project um, output, which is often an academic paper or a, a report. Um, some task posters offer payment for um, doing a task and occasionally people are offered authorship depending on 
um, the type of work and the quantity of work that you're doing towards a project. You can also accumulate recommendations on your task exchange profile. So I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But um, essentially, when you complete a task for someone, the person you've done the work for um, can then endorse you. So it's putting a recommendation up on the public profile, which is then visible for other people who look at your profile. So just looking at some benefits of joining Task Exchange in addition to the Cochrane Consumer Network. So we have um, different opportunities that come up on Task Exchange. So by joining both of them, you'll, um, you'll be alerted to uh, a whole range of, of opportunities. On Task Exchange, you can also um, opt to receive weekly task alerts and that you can make them specific to your interests. So if you're wanting to help out on projects to do with um, diabetes, then you can opt to just get um, tasks related to that interest. And as I said before, you can collect recommendations, which I think people often find useful to use for their CVs and portfolios in job applications and in other ways. So I'm going to give you three examples of consumer tasks that have come up recently on Task Exchange. The first one is um, a Cochrane vascular consumer referee needed. So this one says we're looking for people to comment on the review. Um, I'm not going to try and read those words out loud. If you have personal or carer experience of this condition, your comments would be very useful. Systematic review methodology expertise is not needed. If you're interested, we'll send you the review and a comments checklist. So that's an example. Here's a similar example. This one's consumer input for review of outpatient and inpatient treatment for blood clots in the lung. So looking to for people to comment on this particular review. Again, if you've got personal or care experience, your comments would be very useful. Systematic review methodology, expertise not needed. So you can see in these examples, um, the express your interest box. So the idea is you, once you find something that you're interested in, you would um, write a message to the person who's posted that task and send it in and they'll receive it um, and take it from there. So the final example is a little bit different. This one um, is person seeking a patient partner for a guideline panel with the experience of subclinical hypothyroidism. <clears throat> and the person needed for, for October to December 2018, about 10 hours in total. Um, and this one was quite a detailed post. So they go into some detail about exactly who they're looking for as a consumer and a lot of detail about what's required for the tasks in terms of time commitment and exactly what the tasks would, in, would involve. So that's three examples of the types of tasks that come up for consumers. I want to take a look at the nuts and bolts of how Task Exchange works for helpers. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, we hope. The idea is that you first, um, well, initially you'd need to sign up to Task Exchange if you had, haven't done that yet. Once you've signed up, which is a very quick process, it takes a few minutes, you log into Task Exchange and the first thing we invite you to do is create your personal profile. Um, this is really important because if you volunteer to do a task, the person who's looking for volunteers will want to know about you. So they're going to go straight to your profile and read about who you are and what skills you have. So once you've created your profile, you could browse the list of tasks that are available at that time to find what interests you. You can also sign up to these weekly email alerts. Um, once you find a task that looks of interest, you can see what reward is being offered and when the task needs to be completed by. Um, and if, if it all is looking good, you can then contact the person and, and show your interest. Um, they then choose someone to, to do the task for them. And once you're chosen, you get on with the job and complete the task and help finish the project. So what I'm going to do now is take you across to the platform and let's have a look at, at how it looks. Okay, so if you haven't um, got a, a Cochrane account, you, the first thing you'd need to do is sign up for a Cochrane account, which gives you access to Task Exchange. So that's that process that just takes a few moments. I've got one, so I'm going to log in now. 
Here we go. So this is the Task Exchange homepage. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this drop down menu <laughs> gives you access to your profile. So I'm going to go into Manage Profile. This is where you set up your profile. So there's the option of putting in a, a photo of yourself. This is a Task Exchange team profile. So it looks a bit different to a personal profile um, in, the, in regard to the photo at least. So there's a space to put your name and your position or job title and a bit more description about who you are, what country you're in. You can put in a LinkedIn profile or a ResearchGate profile. There's areas of expertise by topic. So again, if this is important as consumers, usually you're interested in focusing on work around one particular health topic or you may be interested in more than one, but this is the spot to, to do that. Put in some skills. So um, in that skill drop down list, there's consumer in input and also consumer reviewing. So, um, and there may be other skills that are relevant for you. There's a section for languages spoken, if that's relevant. Um, Cochrane groups you've worked worked with, special interests, and then there's a conflict of interest spot down the bottom there. So again, that's pretty straightforward. This is your chance to tell people who you are and and kind of to sell yourself if you're wanting to help out with projects. What I'll do is show you, um, if I go to Browse Network, we'll just take a quick look at, um, at, a, at a personal profile that's been completed so you can see what they look like on the, on the platform. I'll take you in top profile here. So Steve McDonald, um, there's a there's a blurb at the top where he's he's popped in some some detail about who he is and um, his background. You can see his areas of expertise, his skills, and he's also put in his published reviews. So that gives you a sense of so if, if you're applying for something. Um, the person who's looking for help will go to, to your profile and, and read about who you are there. Okay, so if you, let's say you've filled out your profile, now you're looking for tasks that you might want to apply to do. You might go to the browse task, the all task list here. So this is all the tasks that are currently available on the platform. And what you might like to do is filter the tasks looking for consumer tasks. So on the skills list, there's two skills that I recommend you use. There's consumer input, and then there's also um, review consumer. So those are the two consumer related um, classifications under the skill list. The other thing that you might want to filter by is topic. So let's say, um, uh, let's, Let's just use the first one to be easy. So let's say you were interested in um, looking at projects related to ageing, both ageing and consumer input. So at the moment there aren't any um, that meet those criteria. The one that's popped up there is actually um, relevant for all consumers, not, not necessarily a special one that, that comes up for every um, search query. So, um, I'm going to do blood disorders, nothing there either. So I've picked some bad filter, <laughs> but you understand the concept of filtering there. So that's what you do to filter the list to find if there's anything available and specific to your interests at the moment. So the next thing to show you is if you, when you come across a task that you are interested in, so let's say that you're interested in this one, to show your interest, you're just flicking down to the bottom of the page there, telling the person who you are and why you think you'd be good to help with this particular task and send it off. So they receive your message and then they'll get in contact um, if they'd like your help. What happens then, say you are chosen for a task, you and the, and the task poster will move off the Task Exchange website to get that task done. You'd probably be emailing back and forth to get the work done. Once you finish the task, you can go into My Tasks, which is at the top 
um, line there. This is so this is where all the tasks that you've applied for will sit. So you can review all the tasks that you've applied for. Once you finish the task, you click the, the um, green button up the top there, finish task. The task poster at that point will get an email that says that you've completed the task and the email will also remind them to go back into your profile and add a recommendation or endorsement. So by you heading in here and clicking finish task, that um, initiates that, that process of um, you being able to accumulate recommendations onto your um, profile, which I think is really um, can be very helpful in terms of helping you get um, more tasks. And then the final thing to show you is how to sign up for the weekly email alert. So again, heading down to the drop down menu to manage preferences this time. If you go to the bottom of that page, you can click this button here to email a weekly summary of current tasks. And again, adding in the topics that you're interested in and the skills. And that way the emails that you get will just alert you to tasks specific to your interest. Thank you very much, Emily, for that presentation about task exchange. And so I'd just like to finish by thanking you, Emily, and Oliver Willis for uh, the contribution to, to the webinar. And just to say this to people who are listening to this um, recording, uh, thank you so much for your contribution to Cochrane. Um, your contributions as consumers are vital to the organization. They help improve the quality of our evidence. They make it more accessible to people who use it. And um, that's a, a really important part of the way that Cochrane produces its evidence. And we're committed to making uh, uh, consumers a part of the heart of the organization. If you need more information, do go over to the consumers.cochrane.org uh, website. Please do contact me if you have any questions at all about uh, becoming involved as a consumer. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you again for listening and good luck in uh, your future work with Cochrane. Thank you.